Ambitious new proposals for the future of Wimbledon Park have been published, outlining required improvements and how to make better community use of the park, including upgrading the current athletics field and viewing stand into a multi-sport facility and stadium. In 2016, Wimbledon Park was placed on Historic England's at-risk register due to uncertainty about the park's future, the impacts of divided ownership on landscape management, views of the original designed landscape being obscured, and the deteriorating condition of the lake. At a recent public meeting hosted by the Wimbledon Club, proposals devised by the Friends of Wimbledon Park and the Capability Brown Society based on the London Borough of Merton's Wimbledon Park Master Plan were offered up for discussion and are being seen as a major step forward in proposing solutions for the divided ownership and creating a brighter future for this great two-star listed park whilst also making the park more accessible to the community. Yeah, I'm delighted to see so many people here today taking an interest. I'm glad there are ambitious plans because there should be because the park is not used to its best. But we need to pr preserve the heritage uh, and make it what local people want. It's just great to get everybody together, people who are involved with the park, people who respect its heritage. There are so many different organisations and different uh, people who come here, local families who use the park every day with their, with, their, with their young children. Everybody's got an interest in, in what happens in the park. It's wonderful that the Wimbledon Club is so supportive, hosting everybody and uh, you know, bringing people together to discuss all the various and proposals that are put forward. Concerns about the deterioration of the park and the potential solutions were raised by Dr Dave Dawson, who believes Merton Council, the owners of the lake, are not keeping the public informed and they should engage with the friends of the park to create harmonious solutions. Dr Dawson, who's a retired environmental scientist, addressed the deteriorating conditions of the lake and the consequences to the park users, as well as highlighting some potential solutions. There's absolutely no doubt that Merton have to do the right things about flood risk uh, because that's a risk to human life, if not uh, property. Uh, so that's quite significant. Uh, but in my view, they haven't properly consulted the public on what the options are. There's more than one way of doing that, and there may be a combination of factors. And indeed, the one way of doing it most cheaply most quickly and that would benefit most interest in the heritage landscape here around the lake is one which they're not seriously considering and that's lowering the level of the lake which lowering it to a level that it was historically. Swim Wimbledon believe the lake is currently underutilized and were attending the meeting to make their case for allowing organized open water swimming. Uh, we're a group of volunteers who really want to bring open water swimming to the lake uh, we've tested the water of the lake, it's clean enough and we know that open water swimming can be less invasive than many of the current water sports activities on the lake uh, and we also know that there's great local demand for that. Um, we very much hope that bringing open water swimming to the lake can both improve the ecology of the lake uh, and help generate income for Merton to improve local facilities. The new plans to upgrade the athletics track to a multi-sports stadium were introduced by Martin Sumpton, the vice chair of the Friends of Wimbledon Park. But why is this investment required? It's not going to get better on its own. And why spend money patching and painting over the dilapidated areas, including the track, which has been damaged by tree roots. Um, it's barely fit for purpose. It's an amenity which is used barely 11 hours a week. This could be so much better. And as a community asset, uh, as the proposition uh, puts forward, we want it to be used for sports, plural, many sports. Athletics is going to have even better facilities to rival any in London. It will have a designated throwing area which will be landscaped, it will be beautiful, it will be well drained and the local community who might not be there visiting for sports will also be able to make use of uh, the space which is allocated for learning it might be nature study, it could be art and crafts, it could be any number of things. Basically, an architect and an engineer is there to create a building with space. How that space is used is entirely at the will of the people. And it's to serve the local people. And if it serves the local people well, then it will derive and generate income which the local community will benefit from. 
At the moment, London Borough of Merton is not making money from this park, and although the purpose is to make the stadium sustainable, I hope that by making something which is going to conform to a proper business plan, to a conservation management plan as well, then it will sustain itself and will not be a burden on the community, it will be an asset. We need community space uh, and of course developing sports. There are hundreds of kids, for example, who want to play hockey, can't because there's not facilities. And we've got coups for uh, other sports, cricket and those sorts of things. So we can have a, a resource that um, doesn't invade new territory. The artificial pitch clearly loses green space, but we've got green roofs and others. And if we put the hybrid turf down at the other place, we get a green space balance. So it should be a winning uh, thing all the way through. And of course, at the end of the day, a uh, sustainable uh, financial option for Merton. Is the amenity really only used 11 hours a week? We asked a regular user and member of the Wimbledon Windmilers. Um, it's, it's massively underused. Um, it's really hard to access it at the moment. Um, I'm a coach of the Windmilers, so obviously trusted people have keys, but for the general public or you know, even myself in the week, it's never open. Um, it's really hard for people to figure out how they can use it. Sometimes the gates are open and people run in and then they try and leave and they discover it's been locked uh, so it's yeah it's a bit shambolic at the moment. How would a new multi-sport stadium benefit local schools? If, if, a, if a pupil um, or, or a young person is, is wants to be a solicitor and they go to chambers at, you know at Temple you know they see that environment it's professional isn't it and so I, I think any redevelopment to something like the athletic stadium puts the professional element of sport into place um, and does raise people's games that whole idea of competition isn't it it's about looking around and having an environment that's safe and that's well resourced for them to be the best they can at that particular sport. So I, th I think I think that the environment does make a difference in just the same way that a science laboratory would make a difference or a, or a design technology room would make a difference. I, th I, th I think it's the same principle. At the moment, we're going all the way to Barn Elms um, to use facilities down there, and that eats into the learning time for pupils. It's time for them to get changed, time for them to travel, and then by the time they get there the difficulty is you've got a limited time to, to, to learn and to develop and then they have to come back they have to come back so in terms of the learning and the amount of time we can put into sports provision the closer we are the better it would be for us we also spend hundreds of thousands of pounds a year coaching students down um, to, to, to there and so actually we'd really like to be able to provide something that's much closer for, for pupils. What does the neighbouring multi-sports club, the Wimbledon Club, think about the new stadium plans? So our particular interest is in sporting facilities and where we could share, where we could offer our coaches, uh, our environment, our, our child protection uh, and all that organisation that goes to sport. One of the reasons the park is on the at-risk register is because of the impacts of divided ownership on landscape management. Could this meeting be a step in the right direction to solving this? We need to all talk and we all need to talk with some plans, you know, not just talk for the sake of talking, with some plans, with some ideas, uh, trying to get some sort of consensus uh, and, and get something done. I mean, even if it's as simple as the ability to walk around the lake. If we could all agree something, get that project off the ground, make it work, people will see, oh, that something's happened there. Now the next thing might be a bit bigger, a bit more controversial, but hey listen, let's all talk. Um, it's, it's lovely, this area of London, this park is brilliant. Uh, we are fortunate to have our bit, um, but we want to participate more and support. They need to work together, you can't work in isolation. You can't do a big project like, they can, like this and work in isolation. And so I think, yeah, because I'm new to the role, I can't say very much, but I want to go back to the office and speak to officers and try to bridge some of the gap and try to clarify some of my, you know, some of the things they've said here today. Overall, I take from it that 
we need to ensure that all different community users have the access that they want for the park and for their activity, um, whether you're a dog walker, football, hockey, tennis and so on. Uh, and that's really important um, from my side and, and I'm hoping that one day too um, the vision of being able to walk right round the park and round the foreshore of the lake uh, will one day be achieved. It's clear everyone is passionate about the park. Everyone wants the best outcome for the park. But their views are quite different. And I think in the end, the park we end up with will be a compromise, partly driven by funding, partly driven by what's achievable. And at the end of the day, there will be some groups that won't be fully satisfied with what happens to the park. The architect who drew up the new plans was also responsible for a previously commissioned plan in 1998. Is the remit for the plans different today? Well, the remit is, is different because in 1998 we didn't know what to do with the athletic stadium and the feeling was, well, will the athletic stadium be here forever? Will it go somewhere else? Don't get involved in, in trying to develop a brief for the athletic stadium. Leave that alone and just see how you can improve the setting of the athletic stadium, which involved on my 98 plan just getting rid of, rid of all the line of Leylandii trees and opening it up and sculpting the landscape around it so that it was slightly more harmonious into that setting. So at that stage we didn't have a, a user brief for how we could up the use of the stadium and all those facilities in that, in that particular area of the park. So, I, so this is in a sense an evolution from that time and taking it forward. Wimbledon Park was originally landscaped by Capability Brown around 250 years ago. Is this heritage still relevant today? I've been researching old maps and old documents and so on and I've discovered we have here the core of the Capability Brown design it was around this lake that we have outside the window here that the whole park was focused and we have a large number of elements here the, uh, the veteran oaks, the waterside vegetation, you name it that all dates back to Capability Brown's design so we have here a fine heritage landscape which is at risk, it's at risk because people are not properly talking to each other uh, but it's great to have, and we still have the best vistas left here. You can stand on the dam, you can look across the lake, across the grass of the golf course with the veteran trees, to St Mary's Wimbledon on the crest of the hill. That view was designed into the landscape by Capability Brown for his rich clients to enjoy. The public can enjoy that today. That's, that's great.